Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. Today, tell me the stories of Jesus. William Henry Parker, his early life began to write verses, and having joined the General Baptist Church, became interested in the Sunday school, and, and was led to compose hymns for use at anniversaries. Parker wrote this hymn in 1885 at the request of the children of the Sunday school class. Teacher, tell us another story. The original six stanzas were printed on the hymn sheet, and I've got three in this hymnal. The hymn first appeared among the Methodists, the 1935 Methodist hymnal, under the heading Hymns for Children. Perhaps the most enduring stanza is the second recalling the children as they gathered with Jesus. The original fourth stanza is recalling Christ's miracle of stilling the tempters has been omitted from many hymnals. Even though it's alluded to the opening stanza, Tales of the Sea. And that stanza is tell me in an accent of wonder, how rolled the seed, tossing the boat in tempters, O Galilee, and how the master, ready and kind, chided the bills and hushed the wind. Now, I don't know why that would have been uh, not included in the hymnal. I, I, you got spaces in this hymn that got six, seven, eight stanzas of songs that don't belong in the hymnal. You can rule out the stanza of the miracle of Jesus walking on the water and the, the petrified fishermen in a boat and Jesus calms that storm, but you can put it, my eyes have seen the coming of a great big lie. But you can't put the... the now listen, this is a wonderful stanza. The fact is that the hymnals won't put it. I got a problem with the hymnals today. The junk that they do put in them and the, the great stuff. What's wrong with six stanzas? And we move on to the next one. Though the biblical truths are quite valued in the original fifth stanza, it's perhaps the most in poetic, uh, poetry this stanza alludes from the first line of Matthew 10, 29 to 31. Concluding, you mean they've taken out the scripture in a stanza of a hymn to put as a deer mellows in the field without God, without Jesus, without Bible? Concluding, fear ye not, therefore, ye of more value than the sparrows? The third line draws from Matthew 6, 28, 29. So we're seeing, tell me the stories of Jesus is biblically sound of the King James Bible. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not rain like one of these. And that stanza is, tell how the sparrows that twitters. <laughs> they love that word today, Twitter. Oh, yonder tree, the sweet metal side lily may speak to me. Give me their message, for I would hear how Jesus taught us our Father's care. What's wrong with that? Why is that going? If this is for children, I think for more for adults too. Would we not want to put the nature taught unto what the God of the creator of creation taught? I mean, there are people out there who hug trees, love animals, and, and get in with nature. What about the creator of nature? An original final stanza recalling Christ's passion. Why are these stanzas omitted? May have been omitted because the subject was not felt appropriate for a child's sensibility or bitter pain. You mean we're not to teach the agony? of the sufferings and death of Christ according to the scripture. That's too hard for them. And yet I know this was written in the 1800s and the 19 and 20 hundreds that we are in today. Is there not our children violence of television, radio, and comic books and, and education? Are they not swelling around with swords and guns and blood and trauma and video games? I know that wasn't a problem in the 1800s, but that's a problem today. And we can't teach them the blood of Christ. We cannot teach them how Christ suffered and died. We can't let the children have that, but we can give them uh, vegetables talking. We can give them one-eyed pirates. 
We can give them other kind of junk and lies. But we can't give them and of the cross where my Savior for me was slain. Sad ones or bright ones, so that they be. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. What is so insensibility? What is so that it has to be, oh, we got to take this out for those young children's ears. Might be scared to death. And of the cross where my Savior. That's the gospel. Christ died according to the scriptures. For me was slain. I, I would want the children to sing that. I would want the children to get that in the heart. Sad ones or bright ones. Any child. Anyone. Whosoever. So that they be stories of Jesus. Tell them to me. Though published in more complete form in British hymnals, the final stanza in many hymn, hymnals published in the United States focus on Christ's triumphal entry upon Sunday is actually the third original poem. The child's band, waving a branch of palm tree. Here's, here's the fun. High in my hand, one of his heralds. Yes, I would sing. Loud as hosannas, Jesus is king. And that doesn't even match the third one I have here. And we'll talk about that in a moment when we get to the third one. Since the original poem ends with Christ's death on the cross, two authors have added an alternative closing stanza on Christ's re resurrection. You mean they're changing? They're rewriting? They're modernizing? Tell Me with Joy of His Rising by Ruth Fagg, author of children's book, and Gladly I Hear of His Rising by Hugh Martin. A Baptist pastor and author. Well, I don't see anything wrong that has to be rewritten. Go write your own hymn. Rather than following through on the author's original intent, hymn, hymnal editors in the United States, God bless America, have reduced the hymn from one about Christ's life and ministry to a hymn about how Jesus encounters children. Children centered. Let's take the eyes off the gospel and let's put it on the poor little kitties. Specifically in the synoptic passage cited above in the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Based on the first stanza that indicate tales of the sea, the hymn lacks poetic integrity when the stanza is ex exercised. So, we have a wonderful him here for children to learn about the Bible and it has been messed with it's been corrected it's been short chained you know if you were old three dollars at the store you would turn around and say to the cashier uh, you owe me three dollars this is the receipt and we have a receipt of the original poem and him written that has six, six stanzas and three have come short. And I would cry out to the hymn the writers, the hymn publishers, to say, You owe me three stanzas and you can get rid of the other junk that are in your hymnal. That has nothing to do with Christ. You can cut out some of those carols that we read with, what, only one or two carols were good, maybe three. You can get rid of three oriental men that came from somewhere and came with, you know, you can get rid of that garbage. And you can give me three biblical stanzas for this hymn to be sung by children. Now, before we break into stanzas, let me give you a firm warning that we are to exhort, we're to teach, we're to preach in season, out of season. And as far as Sunday school stories for children of the gospel, they're fine and great, but we've also got to teach the truth. When we go into the gospels of Jesus Christ, we are talking about Jewish Old Testament. And we're not looking at the church age. We're not looking at doctrines for born-again Bible-believing Christians. The Christian does not come until after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ comes after each of the Gospels. 
And as far as Gentiles, we don't really show up until the book of uh, Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch. And so we must realize when we teach our children, we ought not teach them in error. The stories, teach them the stories, but they're not to be for us. As we go into stanza one, tell me the stories of Jesus. Now, would that just not make your heart glad? Would that just not excite you? For someone to come walking up to you and say, hey, I want to hear about Jesus. I got a guy we're witnessing to, we're dealing with, we're, we're educating him in the Lord. He, he, he's found in the Lord. He, he's settled in the Bible. He's rooted. He's grounded. He's growing. And he comes every week and he wants to hear more. He wants to grow more. And it just excites our ears that he wants. And then we go to another place and we preach the gospel and it's rejected and it's hated and it's tried to stop and it brings a, a cast of dreary anger. Because so many people could hate God and his word. It's written. Let's look at more. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Can you sing that? If the song leader got up, say, whatever number is in your hand, tell me the stories of Jesus. Can you sing with your heart? I love to hear. Or do you want animals talking to you? Do you want hyped up little flowery message? Do you want a diabetic message? That doesn't even come from the Bible. Do you want pastoral stories that every pastor changes with his own name in his own life that had never to be with him? Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. A child has many, many questions. A child's words are why, what, where. And as a child's story of Sunday school and learning these children here, it's that child aspect to go up to Jesus and say, who, what, where, why, how, which. And Jesus in his patience and endurance and love would sit down, kneel down, or even stand to answer those questions, to help those children. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Now look at that. If he were here. The writer of this hymn is for children to sing and to learn. I hope the Sunday school teachers will follow up. You are wanting to hear from Jesus. You are wanting to, to the words of Jesus Christ more than any other words. That'd be great for an adult too. See, scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea, stories of Jesus. Tell them to me. Man, look. In three parts, the writer of him is taking us through the gospel. Where Jesus would stop along and explain to the people on the sea. One time he, he got out in a boat. He went out in a boat and he preached to people the, the parable of the sower. From the stories of Jesus. His whole life. Wonderful, great, true story of God that cannot and will not is unable to lie. Stanza number two. First let me hear how the children stood round his knee. And he did. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Such as them is the kingdom of God. And the disciples rebuked those children. And the writer again, first let me hear how the children round about his knee. And I should fancy his blessings resting upon me. Words full of kindness, deeds full and great. Now, not only we have stanza one. We have that one who wants to hear from Jesus. And now he wants to hear from the children who were before Jesus. He wants to be part of their children. All in love and light of Jesus' face. And we step off even further. Not only does the writer say, hey, I want to hear Jesus. I want to ask Jesus. I want to speak with Jesus. I want to hear the mouth of Jesus. But I want to see his face. Glory to God. 
If a proper Sunday school teacher with the love of God and the word of God teaches their student and along with his him the life of that child to be in Christ, you will see young children come to Jesus. You're not going to get with nonsense with the children and lying with the children. You know, up in heaven, we, you know, you got that big foam hand, number one. You ain't got that garbage. Bring all your pennies and see how many pennies. Now you ain't going to got that garbage. And the garbage that you got five minutes of Bible and vacation school and you got 55 minutes of playtime and junk and garbage. That ain't going to do a child. It ain't going to work. And one day you'll find out how rotten Sunday school, I mean, the, the vacation Bibles are. But the look upon his face, I believe, is another hint. Into the city I follow. Now, stanza three, we're going to get, we're Jewish. It's a Jewish nation. It's a Jewish king. Is King Jesus, King of the Jews? Now it's good for this. Is the lesson you're teaching your children about the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem? That's that's great. That's wonderful. But that's not church. I'm not looking for a king. I'm not glorifying Jesus Christ as a king. I am glorifying him as God manifested in the flesh that suffered and died and is risen from the grave and seated at the right hand of the Father that he is able to save my soul. Into the city I follow. So here's someone following Jesus. That's nothing wrong with that. Take my stand. Waving a branch of the palm tree high in my hand. Well, for the Christian, the Bible speaks after the resurrection, go in all the world and preach the gospel. It's not waving palm. Listen, I came from churches that palm leaves on Palm Sunday. That's not us. That's not the church doctrine. We're to go in all the world and preach the gospel. We're going to go in all the world and make disciples and grow them and learn them from babyhood to adulthood. Now, let's look at the Bible for a moment about that palm branch, okay? In John chapter 12, verse 13, the context of the hymn, took, palm, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, which means save us. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's not Christian. He's our savior. He's our groom. He's our redeemer. But also about those palm branches. In Mark 14, 65. And some began to spit on him. And to cover his face and to buffet him. And to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. I know that's not the, the trees, but you can give Jesus palms of the trees. Or you can give Jesus the palms of your hands. One is for glorifying Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. The other one's smiting him. And with those palms of those hands that smoke Jesus Christ. That is, he suffered and died according to the scriptures. But that's not it of the gospel. He was buried also. And he arose again the third day of the scripture. According to the scriptures. One of his heralds, that's exactly what Romans chapter says, take your feet and spread out the gospel to anybody and everybody. Yes, I would sing loud hosannas. That means save now. But that is Jesus the King. That is the palm branches that are Jewish. That is the Old Testament that Jesus Christ would come upon a, a, a coat of an ass to the Jews. That is before the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ is alive. He's heading to Calvary, but he has not been to Calvary. He has not been in the empty tomb. He is not resurrected from the grave. He is not ascended to the Father at the point of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John with the palm branches. The man that gave him the, the bread and made them all happy in John chapter 6, and they're crying out Hosanna right now because they want a king. 
They want Jesus to come in now, and he wants Jesus to destroy the Roman government, give them their land as God has promised them, and let them live happily ever after with free fish and free bread and free wine for the rest of their being. That's what they want from Jesus. They don't want the suffering Messiah. Because they cry out in a few days, crucify him, crucify him. The one that said, save us, save us. Kill him. Kill him. And yet, as much as Jesus preached and taught and prophesied the death, burial, and resurrection in three days, who was at that grave the moment, the, the morning and the moment that Jesus was off that cross, out of that burial tomb, and alive and well? Nobody. Even the women came with spices and ointments to do a dead body, not a live body. That's this side of the resurrection. That's this side of Calvary. But, hey, you must teach the children about the Gospels. You must teach the ch children all the stories of, of Jesus in the Bible. Their prophecies fulfilled. They are that God, only God could do what Jesus Christ has done because he is God. And if we fail, Christians who are saved may fall off into a religion where it says Jesus is not God. Or we come from outer space and Jesus and Satan are brothers. Or if we eat or if we drink the physical body and blood of Jesus Christ, we'll be happy ever after. We must teach the children a right story. And this hymn is a great story for children and for adults. And if you're teaching through the gospel of Jesus Christ, a hymn like this would stick in a little one's heart. But when it comes to the palm branches, when it comes to King Jesus, we also need to have a lesson on the difference. Let's see, what, let's see what's the Bible, the only Bible that King James has to say is, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to rightly divide Matthew. Between the Jewish, the Gentiles, and the church. We need to do it with Mark. We need to do it with Luke. We need to do it with John. We need to do it with Acts. There are three groups of people that the Bible deals with. There are Jews. There are Gentiles. And there are Christians. There are unsaved. And there are saved. And we can't go running into the, Bible, uh, to the, the, to the Bible, we can't go running into the Gospels, we can't go just running, pick up a book and say, I'm going to name it and claim it, which is going on today. Heresies and false religions and occults go running into the, into the Bible and say, well, look what I found here. And yet when they find a verse that contradicts what they're teaching, they will revise that, that passage. They will change that scripture. They will remove that scripture. They will give some kind of tradition against that scripture. And we've got a wonderful hymn here for children. And I said that there are six stanzas to this hymn. Mine only has three. And I read the other three to you, and they're nothing offensive. And I'm going to read them to the, again to you, the last three before we close. And think to yourself, why would these three stanzas be removed? And they, it's one of them, the, the second one I'm going to read is because the appropriate of the children's sensibilities. Now listen to that second one when I do it. But the first one is removed. Tell how the sparrows that twitters, oh, on yonder tree, the sweet melody side lily. That's what things Jesus spoke about. The sparrows are lilies. The Bible speaks about, may speak to me. Give me their message. Is it Job in the book of Proverbs says, go speak to the animals. Animals will tell you about God more than an education. Animals will tell you more about God than seminaries. Give me their message, for I would hear. Are you willing to hear? It's amazing. It's wonderful when you find someone who's willing to hear. How Jesus taught us 
our father's care. Again, this next one is removed because of sensibilities. And, and at the cross where my Savior... Now, I find that that's offensive to religion. That's offensive to education. That's offensive to the carnal Christian, the cross of Jesus. Because we can't have the Calvary's cross. No, we got to have baptism. we got to have deeds and alms and tithing and charity. We've got to have membership. we got to have anything but that cross of Jesus. we got to have anything but the blood of Jesus Christ and only the blood of Jesus. Only by blood are we saved. God said that blood has been given for the, to be sacrificed, to be given up for our sins. In the life is the blood. It's not in water. For we, for me was slain. Now what is so wrong with that? Why is that removed from the hearts, from the mouths, from the ears of children? What sensibility that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures? That that's not even in this hymnal. If you got it in yours, praise God. Sad ones or bright ones. So that they be stories of Jesus. What could be the stories of Jesus? Tell me about his death. Tell me about his resurrection. Tell me about how they put him in the tomb. Tell me how they had guards standing out there. Tell me how Herod said, put a two, put a seal on that. Put him out. The Jew said, well, you know, the, the disciples are going to hire some men, take the body out, and then, you know, the last shall be worse. And tell me about it. Tell me what they did with his beard. Tell me about the whip. Tell me about how they punched him in the face. Tell me about the, the right robe. The scarlet robe they put upon him. I mean, the violet, the the purple robe they put on him. Tell me about the, the thorns. Tell me about the nails. Tell me how Jesus stood and not rebuked before Pilate. Tell them to me. And then the children's band waving a branch of a palm tree, which is the the third stanza I have here is almost like this. High in my hand, of his heroes, yes, I would sing, loudest hosannas, Jesus is king. I, I'd say for, for a child of God, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. So that's what we have here. We have a wonderful. Right now, when I, when I started this, I knew it wasn't going to be all going to be bad. The biblical truth for his, I put it in there. Even, you know, talking about Jesus is king. He is king. Now, the Sunday school teacher get up, or the, the pastor get up before the children, or the teacher get up before the children. Now, when you think children, Jesus is king, let's look upon the title that Pilate wrote. That'd be a great thing. Jesus, king of the Jews. And there's a whole lesson right there. Now, and an aspect to that, what, what is Jesus to us Christians? He's our groom. We are his bride. There's another teaching there. He is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our God. There's a teaching there. But wonderful. Great. Very few we're finding, but here we go.